Welcome back to the Fishing Doctor's Adventures. Today I'm back on a lake that I haven't fished in a few years. And there's lots of ice. It's December 15th, something like that. So still early ice. Minus 10 today, probably a high pressure system. There's no wind. I'm gonna set up my jig and jaw jacker. This beast right here with the tooth wheel. And uh, we'll see. I'll pop a few more holes right around the area. See if the jaw jacker catches something while I'm setting up and uh, trying to find the fish. Setting up around a little island on the lake. Hoping some fish are cruising around the island. I find that these mid-lake structures work really good on lakes if you can find a submerged island or an actual island and fish around it. I'm a little late. I'm about an hour after sunrise, so two hours after first light. But I'm sure there's still some fish around. I find the mid-lake structures work better during most of the day because they'll cruise the shorelines first thing in the morning and then they move into deeper water and they'll cruise around these mid-lake structures all day long. So you can usually find them here all day long whereas the shoreline will slow down. At least that's from my experience, that's what works. So we'll see if it works today and hopefully there's some fish biting. We're after brook trout and rainbow trout and there's some huge ones in this lake. Brook trout to like six, eight pounds. Rainbow trout I hear people catch them 10, 14 pounds. A big one is seven or eight pounds. So let's get fishing. Stick around, see how we do. Thanks for watching. Okay, this hole drops off from about 10 feet away from four feet to uh, about seven feet of water. So I know I'm on the edge and the next hole right there drops off to about 11 feet of water. So this is a pretty steep edge. I'll probably drill around the island and find a more gradual slope. But sometimes the steep slope works. So I'll set the jaw jacker up here and I'll punch holes in other areas to try to find a more gradual slope. I like, oh, there's a fish already. Oh, I just had a bite. There's one there already. He's back. There's fish down there. I guess I guessed right. Some guys say, how do you catch fish? Well, you just know structure and pick the right depths. Know what you're doing. Once you have some experience, you'll be able to find the fish and that's how you catch them. If you have trouble locating fish, it's gonna make you it hard to catch them. So I dropped down right away and there's a fish there in no time and he bit. So, oh, here he comes, he's coming back. I'm gonna set the jaw jacker up, let it catch him if I can't. I see them tugging on the line. It's probably a little guy. There'll be bigger ones though. We'll get him. Today's gonna to be hopefully a good day. Oh, there you go. First fish of the day. I'm gonna move that jaw jacker away. That's what I thought, little tiny one. But he was down there right away, and hopefully there's some bigger ones in the area. So let's get set up, drill some more holes. May have to use a bigger presentation today if we're gonna scare those little guys away. Like uh, I do pretty well here on those uh, Rapala ice jigging lures, spoons, who knows. But it could be a good day. Let's see how we do. Just using a little black tungsten by circle tackle. Already another fish there. Well, might be busy with the little guys. Look at that. Whoa, tiny brookie. Oh my, this could be crazy. Might be hard to set up with this small, small tungsten jig. I won't even be able to drill any more holes it's gonna be crazy well you gotta like days like that where you just drill a few holes and start catching fish right away it's a good sign the guys I passed on the ice said it was uh, had a few earlier and then it was slow so I'm hoping some bigger fish come through here not just these smaller models 
Usually if there's a lot of small ones in the area, it means there's good feed too. So, oh, one already grabbed it. One's on there. Look at that, another one. Oh yeah, yeah. you're kidding me? You gotta be kidding me. Oh, they're getting smaller. It's crazy. Where's your papa? Go get your papa, okay? Oh yeah. Just some more holes. Okay, so they aren't hitting that 13 tackle uh, plastic. So I got these spaz plastics. They're scented plastics, all species anise and krill. And they're made by the Kokanee Company. For Kokanee fishing, they fish them in open water with on uh, two tandem hooks. But he sent them to me to try for ice fishing, so I'm going to try them out for ice fishing. I got a small hook down there, so I might have to. You can break them because they're segmented. I'll show you one. Oh, there's a fish coming in there. Let's see. They like white. I kind of like this white and orange one. That one looks kind of tasty. They like orange and white. They got all different colors in one package. That's kind of nice, right? Chartreuse, white, pinks, oranges. All the colors kokanee and trout love. And uh, let's see, I'll pull this up here. I probably should put on a different kind of tungsten jig because this one's not the greatest for a plastic, but that's okay. What we'll do is, first of all, we'll try it, the full thing. Push it up on the tungsten like that. There we go. Let's see how that works. Yeah, it does smell like anise. Pretty buggy down there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten up the drag so that uh, the little guys can tug on it and it won't set the jaw jacker off. I just want big one to grab it and set it off. This is a little bigger, bigger tungsten jig and uh, from Circle Tackle. So I'll put this white one on. I should be able to thread it up really well. Thread it down the middle of the body. Try to keep it nice and straight. And then I'll slide up onto the tungsten jig just like that. Oh yeah, that looks really good. We'll see if that one kills them, has eyes. Then the knot on the eye of the hook down to the hook point so it sits flat like that. And there you go, look at that tail just wiggling away. All those arms. If it's too much, you could break off some of the arms or break off some of the body to make it shorter. You can adjust them however you want. It's about, I don't know, an inch and a half, these uh, plastics. Let's try to catch one here. Only allowed one line in British Columbia, so when I'm done drilling holes, I pull up the jacker and put it to rest till I want to take a break. Turn the battery off so it doesn't die. Set it off to the side. You know what, I drilled holes around here and I noticed uh, in some of the areas there's this dark stuff on the ice like some debris that uh, froze into the ice maybe some weeds there's fish oh there we go right away right away oh look at that a better brookie he just ate that tungsten chick <laughs> he just came in and hailed it that's my first fish on those spazzes. Look at that. It's just gone. He totally inhaled that spaz. I thought, I didn't know how they would take him, but man, he just gobbled it. Like no other bait, just that white plastic spaz and boom. Trout really love white plastics. They just love eating them. And uh, if you don't have bait, <clears throat> you have white plastic, you probably can convince them to eat. Now when I was drilling holes, like I was saying, I noticed this stuff froze in the ice. 
and there's a spot over there that there, the stuff froze in a lot further out. So I don't know if that's a shallower area. I didn't take my Markham over there yet, but I think that might be a key zone to target. So I'm gonna run over there right now and see if it's as good as I think it could be. Always check your drag. Make sure it's smooth and not too tight, not too loose. Oh, I got a loop in my line. You want to clear those off always. Sometimes you get loops <clears throat> when, the ice, when the line freezes up. So straighten those out. Make sure it's not a knot because all of a sudden you'll get a big one that wants to run. And you've got this loop in your line and that's no good. Oh yeah, there we go. Usually it just pulls out. Odd time. Oh, there we go, got one. Oh, got a nicer one. This, this one is catching a little bit bigger models. Not huge, but... But again, he inhaled it. Look how I just ate that thing. Crushed it. go. They're pretty aggressive. He was following it for a little while, but once he took it, he took it pretty hard. I'll try tipping it with a little piece of shrimp, see if that makes him go even more crazy off of it. I think if it's a bigger, bigger fish, sometimes they need a little bit more. All right, let's go try a different hole. Oh, the battery died. Look what I caught. Beautiful rainbow trout, must be about 23, 24 inches long. That's a big one, look at that beauty. Well, let's release him. There it goes. Wasn't the prettiest release, but we'll take it. So that's what I mean, I found the spot on the spot. I drilled holes all right around this island, like spokes on a tire. And I found the area that was the flattest going off the island and that's where I fish. Because that's the biggest area that has the feeding zone for the fish. Biggest fish will congregate on the biggest feeding zone. Their opportunistic structure is key, remember that. You hit that silver and glow slender spoon right after my battery died, of course. That's how it always happens, right? He came in was examining it I didn't know it was that big of a fish and he just crushed it and then it's about minus 10 degrees Celsius today so it's a cooler year I usually fish much warmer temperatures here in British Columbia but lots of ice already like 10 inches of ice here beginning of December almost could drive the truck on it hardly any snow fisher bite came in and hammered it oh look at that still that one I lost with the big head cheeks I think it was a bigger brookie than this but now that we were on that spot on the spot like I told you look at that fish on the slender spoon oh gorgeous fish that one we're gonna keep and eat I just use these deli shrimp put them in a little Tupperware container break up the ring Put them in coarse salt and they stiffen up a bit so you stay on your hook better. That's my tip. And then they don't freeze up in really cold weather because they're salted. Oh, that was a good well, I was just jumping around looking for fish. Got this 48 centimeter rainbow trout, so I'll keep that one. Let the bigger ones go. Keep the ones under 50 centimeters. And uh, it's a good one on the slender spoon. Fought really hard. 
very fun to catch these panasks. And I, I came out to a deeper hole, about seven feet of water, because the four footers uh, turned uh, dead around 11 o'clock. And I found deeper hole on the other end of the island that was producing, and I came out here off this flat, and it's really interesting. It's a really shallow flat off the island, off this side, and I came till it slowly started going down. Once I got to seven feet, it's like fish after fish here with brookies and rainbows, nothing really huge. That's the biggest one so far, but lots of action here. So I'll set the camera up again, see what we can catch on the slender spoon. Good one. <laughs> you saw those big head shakes pull and drag came off right at the hole. Well, that's good. Bigger fish on the spaz. These fish are uh, super aggressive right now. They're coming in and hitting it multiple times even after I set the hook. That's fun when they're like this, turned on. And I just act really active jigging with the slender spoon. There we go. Fish on already. Another brook trout. It's like one after another. You just get down there, another one grabs it. Brookie on the slender spoon. Little piece of shrimp and that's all you need. Hooked it right in the beak. See those trebles come out pretty easy. Oh yeah. And I'm way off the bottom. Like seven, eight feet of water and I'm only going about three, four feet down and jigging up there and they come in and grab it. Little piece of shrimp like that. So this is what you gotta do when you're out fishing to keep on the fish. I drill lots of holes. If it slows down, you gotta move. Change the depth of water. Usually later in the day, they're deeper. And uh, maybe not far from that same structure you were fishing. Just off, a couple, two, three to 10 feet deeper. And uh, you might find them. Don't, don't go moving like, wait, if you're catching a lot of fish in the morning, then just stick around there, move slightly off the structure, and you'll usually find the fish again. Sometimes they turn off completely. I know I have to wait till the evening. They'll usually push up on the same structure you're catching them on in the morning. Oh. That one snapped my line. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, that's a slender spoon. Need another one. That's just on this little spaz white plastic on a tungsten jig. <laughs> little tiny brook trout on that big spaz plastic. to be on the reaction bite so today I pulled out a slab wrap they work really well when there's a reaction bite so I just got a nice brookie on it so let's see if we can get a bigger one 
on it. I'm gonna have to move back to my shallower holes. Maybe the bigger ones are moving in there again. Light's going down. Don't wanna miss the big, oh, there's fish. So now that it's evening, the light's dying down. I'm hooking into some fish, but the weather's kind of cold. And my batteries are dying fast, so I hooked into a few really nice rainbows. One got off in the hole, and a couple others got off long line release. There's some big bows in here. And these panask rainbows fight really hard. So let's see if we can catch one here and a big brook trout on the uh, camera for you guys. I got one off camera and uh, it's about 52 centimeters. Seems I'm slaying the rainbows today. Well, it's been a great day out here. Ice fishing, catching brook trout, and some really nice rainbow trout. I hope you enjoyed that show. A little bit cold. Camera battery's freezing up. Holes freezing up. Everything's freezing up, my hands freezing up, but it's uh, last light here. Fishing's got crazy. I kept my limit. Two brook trout, three nice rainbow trout, and uh, they're coming through pretty good right now. So hopefully, I can catch like a really big brook trout or rainbow trout catch and release. And if not, you won't see this part of the video. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, following along as always. I drill all these holes for you. <laughs> Just kidding. I do it for me, but I'm glad you come along to watch and I hope you learn something when you're following along. Let's get the slender spoon back down there and see if you can catch one. I like biting in the dark, so don't go too early if you wanna catch a big brookie.